Lord, we thank you for the many ways that you speak to us, your children, for the great gift of friends and the way that they can speak your words, for the way that you speak to us, especially in these summer months through the beauty of creation. And in a particular way, we thank you for the way you talk to us in your word. Help us, not just today, but in this week which is beginning, to have ears attentive to your voice so as to know you in your love and to love you in return. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to say thanks, first of all, for taking such great care of Father David and his uh, first couple of weeks. I think that was something that I asked in a particular way before I took off for vacation, and um, he, his reception from all of you has been off the chart, and he's... Uh, already in love with living in Plymouth and being a part of this parish family. So thank you very much for your, your warmth and kindness to him. I don't know if it's because it's uh, summertime and many of us, except maybe for the teenage boys here, we tend to eat a little bit less during the summer months. Or maybe it's because I'm almost lethargically refreshed from being away on vacation or maybe because it's God, hopefully it's because it's God, the, the word I have tonight is a really simple one. In fact, it's, it's so simple that every time I've thought of changing it and going in a different direction, I feel like the Lord keeps driving me back to make just this one simple point. So with that in mind, let me try to do three things. I want to share with you an experience or a grace that the Lord gave me while I was away on vacation. It won't be a travel log, don't worry. There's no pictures today. I want to connect that with Jesus' words in the gospel, most especially just the last line, and then offer a really simple suggestion for us to consider doing in the week ahead. So, first vacation. I don't know how many times I've been asked, did you have a good vacation? I didn't know you could have a bad vacation. I take that back. I had one. My family went to Ohio once. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> Sounded that way. That's not what I meant. It was the only bad vacation I've ever had. It wasn't because of Ohio, but it was so bad that we continue to talk about it, and it was, I think, 30 years ago. So I try to answer everybody very kindly, oh, it was a great vacation, thank you. But what I want to do is scream and go, no, I had a phenomenal vacation. And I really did. A lot of reasons for that. I was with great friends. Uh, there was good food. I was surrounded by beauty. I was in Utah. I don't know if you've ever been in Utah. I think Utah is the prettiest state in the country. I don't think there's a close second. It's just spectacular. My chapel, if you will, every morning was waking up, looking at this valley made from volcanoes, lush green, black lava rock. It was just amazing. It was hot. It was really hot. In fact, one day, I think it was 125. But it was dry. <laughs> and that really does make a difference there. It was more pleasant than this. There was a little golf. I managed to sneak in 16 rounds. <laughs> it was so hot, they were tempted to give us rounds for free. But as great as all those things were, and they were, they, they really combined to make for a wonderful time. I don't think I've ever had a more relaxing vacation in my life. There was one grace in particular that made it I pray life-changing for me. And the grace was the routine I had. So I would get out there, and for whatever reason, I couldn't sleep, but I came home refreshed, even though I couldn't sleep, mainly because I don't think I had anything I had to do. And so I'd wake up 5.30 or so every morning, and I had a chance to spend the first two to three hours every morning in deathly silent environments, simply 
reading the Gospels. And I can't tell you how profound it was for me. Because usually every time I'm reading Scripture, not usually every time, but oftentimes when I'm reading Scripture, I'm thinking about trying to hear what the Lord wants to say to us when we gather for things like this. But I didn't have to preach to anybody because I don't preach when I'm on vacation. We say Mass every day, but we talk enough during the day. And so just to kind of leisurely read the Word of God and to let Jesus talk to me in the way that he wanted to talk to me and does talk as we read the Gospels was extraordinary. I felt like my heart, which beats rather quickly, and my pace, which unfortunately is way too fast, just totally slowed down. And when that happens, incredible things happen, like you begin to notice people, which doesn't always happen with me. And so the last day as I was praying, I was starting to think about coming back and all that waits me here. And I just said, Lord, help me to hold on to whatever I can as I go back to the routine. And like that, I heard the Lord say this, why do you have to go back to the routine? Why don't you change the routine? And so that's what I've been trying to do for the week that I've been back. I'm not necessarily spending three hours every morning praying, but I'm spending more time than I have been. And I'm just trying to, again, linger over the Gospels every morning and just sit with the Lord in a new way and to ask Him to refresh me, to challenge me, to correct me, to call me on, and to make me the man He wants me to be. Which brings me to the last line in the Gospels. This is a long Gospel. It's rich as all get out. Three parables, one of which Jesus explains in length. But as rich as the Gospels are, or the parables are that Jesus tells, it's just the last words that I can't get past. He who has ears ought to hear. That's an odd expression. It's a command, actually. It doesn't sound like that. It sounds like poetry and maybe you scratch your head. We would paraphrase it to mean something like this. Pay attention and obey. Not from some taskmaster, but from a loving God who's proven his love by laying down his life for us. But that's what Jesus is saying to us. Pay attention and obey. That's actually the difference between the weeds and the wheat. The wheat listens and obeys. The weeds don't. That's how we know, come the end of our lives, whether or not we've been weeds or wheat. Were we obedient to God, which simply means to hear from him. God gave us the gift of hearing in a primary way so that we would listen for his voice because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Isn't it rational? Isn't it logical? Isn't it reasonable that if God would go to this extent to save us, that he would continue to talk to us continue to encourage us, continue to speak to us about his mercy, continue to correct us when necessary, continue to talk to us about his love. I think it's more than reasonable. That's what happens when we read the Gospels. I hear people say all the time, Father, I try to listen to God's voice, but I never hear anything. The easy response to that is every single time we pick up the Gospels and we read them. He's talking, even if he's saying things that leave us bewildered, confused, 
or having to ask him to say, will you explain that to me, please? Just like the disciples had to ask him, explain the parable to us. We don't get it. So that leads to the suggestion. Here's the suggestion. Whatever your routine might be, consider changing it. In fact, it's actually like a dare, <laughs> just for the week. For some of us, maybe our routine is we spend a lot of time in front of a TV. For some of us, maybe our routine is we binge watch Netflix. For some of us, maybe our routine is we just get absorbed by talk radio or online news or something else. The exhortation, I feel like the, the challenge, I feel like the Lord wants to give to us is do everything you can this week to push that aside, to be intentional about creating silence. You don't have to go to Utah. You don't even have to go on vacation. And you don't need two hours. It might just be 15 minutes. Maybe first thing in the morning. Maybe last thing in the evening. And sit down and open up the Gospels and ask the Lord, Lord, talk to me. I'm anxious. I'm stressed. The noise we hear out there it isn't doing an awful lot to calm me down. The world's the same two weeks later when I came back, but interiorly, I'm a lot calmer. I'm not calmer because I played a lot of golf. I'm calmer because the Lord's been talking through the Gospels. And just like a baker needs yeast into dough, and it becomes infected, if you will, in a really positive way. So the Lord is inviting you and me in the week ahead to sit down with him and his word and to let him need his truth and his love and his mercy into our minds and our hearts and our wills. He or she who has ears ought to hear.